Hey everyone, it's Carrie over at DoubleClick. Today I wanted to share how I make my flat mail. Recently I have been entering quite a few challenges, whether it be birthday challenges, YouTube subscriber celebrations. I'm hosting one right now that's just an anything goes. And with the cost of postage as high as it is, and I believe it's going up again in July, you can still send a great entry to someone with it being flat and not costing a fortune. For the post office, it has to be a standard, you know, card size, how full the card is. It can't go over a quarter of an inch. And that is not a lot of space when you are trying to stuff, you know, goodies into it. And usually the envelopes that I send cost two stamps for me to mail out one of my entries. I will link a couple of videos up above of some of the other flat mail entries that I have sent in. So you can see a couple different ways that I like to do it. The first thing you have is think about what the entry is. If someone's asking for a 3D item, a tag flip, an embellishment box, that's not going to work. But if you have someone that is doing a, a Memdex card, a Twin Chi, an ATC card, Crafter's Choice, anything goes, then you can get creative and make flat items that don't necessarily look flat to send to your uh, send your entry in. With keeping that in mind, when I read what the entry is, I kind of think about what theme do I want to go with? Will I be able to come up with enough ideas to support that theme, to, to send some goodies, who it is that I'm sending the, the project to? So I'll usually look through their videos to see kind of what their style is and try and send them something that is their style. The project that I'm um, making right now for the crafter, I wanted to send a summer themed, but I wanted to give it kind of like a vintagey feel. One of the things that I did was I looked through all my stash of goodies and I have like a big uh, Echo Park kit. It has um, the 12 by 12s, it has stickers, it has chipboard, it, I have a 6 by 6 pad. So I knew that I would have a lot of variety to pick from summer themed. So that's why I decided to use this kit. So that's one of the first things that I do is I just look through the kit and, you know, start thinking of ideas. When I'm sending mail, my first thing is I always go to fruit because fruit, you can make it cute. You can make it realistic. And to me, it's the easiest like jump off point. So when I was deciding who it was going to, I decided I wanted to do a pineapple because I knew it would have the brown base and I was going for that vintage theme. That being said, um, this was the collection that I opted to use. This is one of the pre-made card bases that you can get at like Michael's or Joann's. Card itself is like five by six and a half. What I do um, is I just start the card base and I want the card to be as flat as it can be because what I want to fit inside is going to make it bulky, but it can't be bulkier than the quarter of an inch. I use paper from the collection and this, this collection had some cut aparts. I made just a simple card front and I do this with all of my entry cards um, to send to them, but it matches the collection. And then I've inked the edges on this one for that uh, little bit of a vintage theme. So on the inside is blank and I will switch positions depending on the supplies that I'm actually adding into it. Have like this, it's like a notepad, um, but it converts the notes into like a little envelope. And so it just kind of folds up like that. I use this as a template and I trace it onto paper from the collection so that I can write my note inside because the note, the card is going to be full of other things. And since it lays flat, I usually pick a spot where there's going to be something bulky on the other side. So I always include a note. So this is kind of where I always start. Um, my process because I know that I'm always going to include a note on this card. For this entry, she wanted a twin she, which is the two by two cards. I knew I was going with this summer theme. First thing that I did was decide what am I sending? The requirement was the twin she. I've created the two by two twin she. It's flat. I actually used a, a really thicker chipboard normally than I would, but I really wanted to use it because 
I she's doing something on a canvas with it. I've used paper from the collection, a handmade embellishment, and then I cut this pineapple out using my Cricut cartridge. And then to spruce it up, I've added stickles to the back of the twinchy, to the crown of the pineapple, and then very small liquid pearls, and then backed the word. And then on the back, I've just added some of my personal information. This was my entry. This is what I'm basing all of my other uh, little goodies that I'm sharing off of. The next thing that I want to do is I need an envelope for this. I do keep a little sleeve of some of my miscellaneous envelopes and these are like my the ones that I use the most. Can't remember who they're from. I think one of them is a paper tray ink, a memory keepers. Yeah, I don't know, but this is like my most favoritist one right here. They think this is the paper tray ink one because it's like that little pocket die. And so these are some of the options that I usually use. I keep these out because these are the ones that I use the most. For my twin sheet, using the same paper from the collection um, and that die, I've just made a little pocket. And then I have a stamp that I found, I think it was at a Goodwill, that says look inside. I love this stamp. I do wish it was in different font, but I love it anyway. So yeah, using the paper, I inked all the sides. And that's going to be the pocket for the twinchy. I'm going to put that right in there. Okay. And I'm not going to decide where this is placed yet until I, I decide all the things that I'm sending. Going off of the twinchy, I decided to create handmade embellishments. And I just use these using a circle punch. Just some word stickers for my stash. So this one says the weekend. I inked all the sides to stick with that vintage type theme and these are all flat. There's nothing bulky added to them and they're still so super cute. This one says summertime. I'm in love with those watermelons. I was really tempted to make a watermelon but I really wanted the brown from the pineapple. This one she can if she wants she can add you know flowers or 3d items to these but for mailing purposes this is this is a great way to send flat mail these i know i need a pocket let me see if i can fit these in this pocket so i made this little pocket it just has like a zigzag top will these fit in there um yeah they kind of fit i don't like how they fit so i'm not going to use this pocket for that I'm going to have to make another pocket, so I'm going to set those aside. The next thing that I did was I knew I wanted to send her some pineapples using my Cricut machine. And I think this was from the SpongeBob SquarePants Cricut cartridge. I've made them all the same, just like on the Twinchy. I've used the liquid pearls, a lot of glitter on the crowns, and then I made them in different sizes. This is like a nice sized pineapple, so she could use this on... Uh, a card or in her scrapbooking or any of those projects. So those are super cute. I love how they turned out. I used one of those pocket eyes to create this one. Again, I replicated the embellishment that I've made. I've used the same paper, inked it up so everything looks cohesive. They have a lot of paper layers, but they're still super flat. And these pineapples, I mean, oh my gosh, they fit perfect in this pocket and I love it so much. I'm going to put that over here for now. I am keeping in mind though this twin sheet is a little thick so I definitely want to put it where when I close the card I'm going to try not to have anything else touch it. Other thing that I am going to be sending her a couple of word summer word stickers. Um, these I just had in my stash. They are going to go into this one just like that. There's that. What I've done is I've just created this little pocket envelope and I used a die, but then I just cut it down so that it fit the circles a little bit better. And this is what I use to ink all of the edges of these projects. So it looks, you know, it's super cute and fun. And then inking it just gives it, you know, that kind of darker vintagey feel. This little one is going to fit all of my circle pieces. And look at that, they fit just perfect. I found a little word, sun and sand, while I was over at my craft area, so I'm gonna put that in there too. I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the twinchy in here and put that towards the top, because when that folds, it's gonna go here. I'm gonna move this more to the center. It, will, it won't interfere with this one. And this one is a little bit bulkier, so I'm gonna move that one down. This one here 
because I don't think that will matter because this one's a little bit raised. And then my note is going to go right here. That is how you make flat mail. I'm gonna put it all together and show you the final product. Everything is adhered down. Place the item so that when the card folds, the items aren't stacked on top of each other to make the envelope too thick. Here we have the twin sheet, we have the words, we have the cutout images, we have the embellishments. I did a little stamp that says hello. And then this is where my letter is going to be. I decided just to use washi over that one. So here you go. That's flat mail. Should cost about um, two stamps. I think it's even cheaper if you take it to the post office. I usually just stick two stamps on it. And here's my envelope. Just a standard size envelope. Fits in there. Doesn't look thick. Looks like a regular envelope. I hope you guys enjoyed this little flat mail tip. If you guys create any flat mail using some of these techniques, please give me a tag in your video. I would love to come and check it out. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.